Okay, everyone, welcome back to the pod best place. Uh, wait, no, that's the wrong tagline. Crap. <laughs> uh, yeah, wormhole from Chat Five to DeFi. Today, uh, as always, we have a special guest. We have uh, Mr. Lau from uh, Lambda and much, much more. We'll find out a lot about him, but welcome to the pod. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me here today. So, Very nice space. Uh, sorry, I asked you just now. I didn't quite hear your answer. Is this your first pod? This is not your first pod, right? Uh, yeah, no. No, not really. Okay, I mean, cool. I've been on other stuff, but is this your yeah. first cool, crypto cool. related podcast? Oh, uh, no, no, Ooh. actually, no. Uh, mm-hmm. Before this was uh, with Chun Wing. Oh, oh Chun Wing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was the the first time. Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I uh, we know friends of friends, uh, Chun Wing. Do you remember him? The crypto world in Malaysia is the super passive well. I, know, I, know. I think he, he, yeah. he did a lot of videos on Axie Infinity. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Really good yeah, we'll talk about it later on. But I think before that, we always like to find out the origin story, right? Uh-huh. Uh, your origin story. You have a history with beatboxing, hence mm-hmm. your nickname, ABC, right? Uh-huh. And I know you're a bit, uh, someone, Jonathan was telling me, or I can't remember who, um, card games uh, on your uh-huh. YouTube channel. <laughs> you're really big into that. But yeah, maybe share with us like what was what what were you doing before you discovered crypto? What jobs were you holding um, when you graduate? Things like sure. that. Sure. So before crypto, I was um, my main profession was event organizing. Mm-hmm. So I was uh, very fortunate to be working with uh, music festival companies. Um, I mean, they they are they are one of their most known is music festivals like uh, it's the ship and all that. So really fortunate to be working there. And then afterwards. <clears throat> I kind of went, I kind of quit the job and went on a uh, travel around the world for like 13 months, then came back and then went full on into beatboxing. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. mean, the whole time I was beatboxing, right? But like when I came back, I was like, okay, you know what? I want to make a name, like a mm. proper name name. So um, went hard into it, started teaching, started uh, or organizing more events. So really took it to heart, like really, really gone all out to it. And then... Uh, yeah, performing was really fun, uh, but generally it it wasn't so uh, rewarding financially. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It was a really paycheck to paycheck kind of situation. Sometimes you don't really get a paycheck in general. So uh, yeah, then then one day or another, someone just kind of brought me into the the space, and I was like, oh, you know, like there's a lot of things you can like make from here like money wise right so i was like okay it's kind of like why i dove, dove in yeah and um yeah like and then and then after that um somewhere during my crypto journey i discover uh trading card games so uh pokemon in specific i don't play right, honestly right. i don't play uh i'm i treat it more as uh um not financial advice but <laughs> as an investment really okay, uh, okay. yeah so yeah, I treat it as a hedge with the other things that I do. So, yeah. I, I have to ask you about that 13 months uh, traveling. Like, what was that like? Where do you travel? How did you uh, fun or not so fun was it? a sense of how, when was that actually? Yeah. Like, yeah year, there was know? 20, I quit at 2014, I think. Oh no, I left in 2014, October. I quit around August or September. Mm. And then I came back yellow 2015 about okay. October November um, I went I first flew to Beijing and then land travel all the way up north into Mongolia a bit by train and then uh, halfway halfway of Russia by train as well Wow and then halfway hitchhike so kind of reached my way to uh, Moscow wow. and then uh, entered Europe from the north end go all the way to the Lofoten Islands uh, saw saw the aurora for like five days straight Whoa. Whoa. these are the I mean, northern lights in scandinavia yeah, northern light, right? yeah i guess for five days like, it was just like every day nine o'clock you just look up wow. Wee, some people like, travel there they don't get to see it man it's yeah like, yeah it's so rare. so really super lucky right, right so right. came down and then spent i think um six yeah six months in europe like up and down left and right just hitchhiking up and down yeah. off southeast west i was with my friend la, so so by the time i reached like, europe i met up with him the two of us that kind of travel like the dynamic duo or whatever. Mm. So we went over to UK afterwards, spent a few months there, then came back into Europe, travel our way into uh, Turkey. So starting our way into Middle East, went to Georgia and uh, another one. I can't remember already. So went there and then flew to India 
and then uh, spent the money in India, and then went went from Mumbai all the. We bought a car in Mumbai. Bought a car. Drove all the way up into the Himalayas. Spent a week up there. Sold the car to a local. Came back. So there's a oh. lot of things in between now. Obviously, when we're traveling, also yeah. we were traveling with bicycles. So we were hitchhiking, and traveling. Right. And then uh, yeah, before we flew back, flew to India, we actually flew the bikes back to Malaysia. So we we, we actually say goodbye to the bikes like like that. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of things that happen in between now. Like slept slept in the toilet, slept on the side of the highway. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Slept in the toilet. You gotta tell us that story. How did that even happen? Uh, oh no, I mean like there was in Norway and um, uh, essentially. <laughs> Essentially, we, you're supposed to take a jetty to go to like across the sea, right? But then, like that night, it was uh, quite quite strong waves, and you could see like in the far end, you could see the clouds. Uh, so it was already night, like eight nine o'clock. So right. the 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 ships just won't move. So there's nowhere to go. But you're at the jetty, you're like left, right. It's like not nothing. All you see is a toilet, and then you go in, and then it's like it's super clean, like yeah, really really true. clean. So like I, I you can literally like touch the floor like like that and then you'd be like no dust on your hand and then I'm like okay fuck it like I, sorry yeah. I don't know like, I nah, like, screw fine. it go for it yeah Try screw it, it. And I was like okay just 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 put up my sleeping bag sleep wake up get get on a ship and just like <laughs> Damn. so sometime one once once uh, me and my friend we actually uh, was in Romania we were cycling up the mountain uh, Transfagorashan so that's where that's where you know like in sports car you see like Porsche or Mercedes they yes. drive and it's very nice here right that's so that's, that's Transfagorashan in Romania so we were cycling up that thing it was really tough but the downhill was great but then um, we, 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 we kept going up until like 10 11 p.m. at night and then we have nowhere to sleep obviously so we set up the sleeping bag literally right next to the road so you know how like your road is like two way, right? Yeah, yeah. And then there's the separator line on the side, and then there's a divider, ma, right? Yeah. So between the divider and the white line, there's a space. Uh, so we put our sleeping bag right there. Wow. So, hey, so the car literally. <laughs> oh, so in, at the night you can hear the, the the car sounds and all that, lah. The car literally drove right past us, like Man. like like that. So like my face is here, it's like whoa. Like so you're protected by the divider only, like essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's quite it's uh, somewhat safe, like, Somewhat safe. Some, somewhat safe, go... like, I wouldn't recommend you to sleep <laughs> by the roadside if you need to. Right. But uh, yeah. Toilet, I, I, toilet sounds safer, I would say. Yes. I just I, I have so so they many questions now, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> and but you can chip in later on. Uh, like, do you have to work, find jobs on the way to finance the, well, the trip or? Um, I well, I guess this is the part where I had to thank my parents because they taught taught me how to save money. So I had a bit of money, uh, but then on the way, I bought a amplifier, which is still in my house, which I still can use to today. So it's been like seven, eight years that thing. Yeah, so it's yep, incredible. Yep. Um, yeah, so I was busking around the road, like Ooh. we would go to Europe, yeah, perform, perform. Um, Ooh. yeah, there was once where my friend he he's a photographer. So he he's a actually super super good photographer. Mm, mm. Uh, his production house is called Two One One Seven Production, right? So, um, what happened? Yeah, so he he got a job from his ex boss to fl fly him all the way to Mexico. So mm. he, obviously he went lah, right? So fine. So I was in Prague for like two weeks, but then in two days I made enough money to last me for like a month. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So busking is yeah. So obviously busking. I don't know how is it now in Europe already yeah. because when I did it, it was like half a decade ago. So I don't know how's the regulation now, but back then you could really just put an M anywhere and then people who like it, they just throw you a dollar. Wow. So like to us, a ringgit is nothing, right? But to them, like a dollar, uh, a euro is even nothing. So they're like, <laughs> just like two euro. And then their coin is one, was it one and two and five? I can't remember. So they'll give you the five euro. So six of it later, you got 30 Keep euro. Yeah, 30 euro can last you like a few days. I oh, mean, yeah, like true. you can two, two nights of like hostel stay, yep, yep. settle. So yeah, so it's quite, it's quite cool, uh, man. Yeah, so that was the funding basically. Right, that's, that's, that's cool. Uh, but I mean, in terms of like why you got on that trip, was it because to get away from the stress of your previous job or like is it uh, a find yourself kind of trip? Yeah, I mean, it was it was down to a moment like I kind of had it in my head was like I got two choice. In in the event company, I was I was actually quite happy. I wasn't getting paid a lot. To be yeah, honest. yeah, it was events. But it was events. It was exciting. It was really like suitable for young blood, right? 
So I kind of had a moment with myself, like, okay, do I want to keep chasing this and eventually maybe get a senior position, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and then get paid better or something like that? Or do I want to like spend the time now to just see what the world is like? So I did option B. <laughs> right. So I, I would say the outcome is a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. How did, like, what did you discover about yourself and what did you discover in general in that 13 oh. month trip? I think, um, I think perspective is very important. Like, mm -hmm. like I mean, before before the trip, I, I always um, kind of had a mantra in my head. It was it was appreciate life always. So, uh, when I went on the trip, I, I really kind of like embraced it a lot more because like, uh, you you really learn to appreciate the littlest, the smallest things in your mm -hmm. life. Like, literally hot water. Like Ooh. you will learn to appreciate hot water when you come across it. But like, oh my gosh. Oh, water. Like you literally be like that because you've been out in like cold weather for like half a week mm. and then you don't even have shower. <laughs> Nevertheless, hot water. So like we, we were like, for example, go to a random park and then there's a neighborhood. Then we go there and ask like, hey, can we have some water because we're thirsty? And then they grief like a, like a whole kettle of hot water. We're like, oh, sir, <laughs> thank you so much. You understand us. So, so little, little things are, and yeah. When I come back, I also realized that actually, to be honest, like Malaysia is really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of things is not fantastic, but weather speaking and food speaking, like we have so much. The basics, yeah. Yeah, that we really take for granted. Like I cannot mm -hmm. express how we take spices for granted. <laughs> oh yeah, like, I know you what have no idea. About. Yeah, right. So when you come back and you eat, and like wow, like wow, I've been it eating. Nothing. <laughs> you know, give give Malaysians a, uh, a sense of what Scandinavian food is like. Uh, meaty, uh, same sauce every day. It's <laughs> just that gravy sauce. So you're like, ah, oh, man, okay, fine. But to be fair, we were cooking when we were out there. Ah, yeah, okay. we, we were cooking okay. a lot. So, but yeah, it's like European foods are great, but yeah, yeah. they're healthy, but they are very bland. So, mm, that's true. Yeah, Brad, yeah. you got all you got across. Right? Sorry, just all, on top on topic of food, all across the different countries you traveled to. All the European countries, I remember Russia, mm. Scandinavia. Yeah. You put them in the same taste profile corner. In terms of food? In terms of the taste, I know you mentioned <sighs> spice. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it's a culture thing, right? Across mm. them they they're used to it. Like so in in, in, in um uh what's it called? In Russia, uh borscht. Borscht is like I mean I like it because it's a soup, right? Yeah. So um, but to Russians, they're like, oh my gosh, borscht again. So like, uh, it, it's literally a, a beetroot soup with bread. Like, that's it. There, there's nothing in there. You want salt and pepper? Go, go, go nuts. Like, that's your spice. Mm. Salt and pepper on everything. Like, mm -hmm. that is your spice. So um, in Europe, it's it's similar. Like, obviously, like, um, what's that called? Uh? Uh, gar. I can't, I can't. Grush. Grush from... Um, Grush. Grush from uh, is it Grush? I can't I can't remember the 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 name of the dish already. But mm. in the Eastern Europe lah, so it's like stew stew part of like meat and vegetable and all that stuff. Mm. It's great, but then like it's like the same flavor. Like they have very like every flavor is mm. the same. So um, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Europeans uh, watching this uh, would agree that Malaysian probably ranks up there in terms of. Uh, well, I mean, food quality, I, I, food choices. I mean, every every culture has good food, right? Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that because they're bland, so they're they're bad. I'm mm. just saying that, like, for someone like an Asian, because we're so used to flavor, yeah. it's really hard to adapt easily. So, good point. Yeah. But obviously, yeah. it's personal personality, right? Yeah. 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 No, so I, I want to yeah. I want to zone in because <laughs> I did my bad. I did a very last minute uh, research on you yesterday, oh, okay. and a lot of it is through YouTube, right? <laughs> Watch one of the videos, and I think the timeline was about four years ago. Uh, you had a rap battle, and we should link the video in the description because it's pretty cool. Yeah, not a rap battle, a rap sorry. Battle. I think a rap. Uh, you were on stage in Germany. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that's for the a, for oh a competition, or either a competition question? or a an exhibit. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Everyone should check it out. Uh, but was that during your solo trip? Yes, I mean um, it wasn't a solo trip, right? It was with my friends, yeah. the two of us. So yes, we. I wasn't expecting to join in the first place. Mm. Uh, somehow there's a mix-up, and then I just end up joining. Like it's it's very weird. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I was I was there. Um, 
yeah, beatboxing, uh, I, I prepared zero because like a week ago, my, my phone got stolen before that. So Oof. all my routine was gone. And then like, I, I literally know I was going on stage two hours before going on oh. stage. And then I was like representing Malaysia in front of like all the beatboxers around the world. I'm like, yeah. what? is going on like why am i i'm going out i'm like i was freaking out a lot so i wouldn't say that's my best but every time anybody type my name that's the first result that comes up i'm like ah oh, okay 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 that and your youtube channel i think everyone ah, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so uh, uh, you you mentioned the word routine so as a total beat, beatbox newbie right what, what's a routine and also what why is it important Oh, um, basically is just like trying to plan your beats right. trying to well, if you put on a show, you need to rehearse, right? Right. So imagine, I don't know, Lady Gaga going up and then not remembering her right. songs. That's the same thing. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's it. pretty bad when you're freestyling like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so I guess we, we move, unless you have any more questions about this Wonder Trip. No, I do have, no, but I, I know we have time. We need to save it for, for lunch. Yeah, we'll save yeah, it for sure, lunch. Sure. Uh, now, so you, you've you gone, so let's say now in the timeline, thir 13 months, you've discovered a lot about many, many things and you decided to go into beatboxing immediately? Mm -mm. I did beatboxing when I was like 16. I so see. It's, uh, it's already been how many years? Right. 14, 15 years, <laughs> damn. So, so that, how about uh, being uh, like doing it full time? What, what, what was the decision to do beatboxing uh, after the trip? So after the trip, I came back, I kind of jumped between jobs and events as well. Um, here and there, good and bad, May and all that. But so in the end, I kind of like uh, had had a had a job that was paying me quite okay. But then I, I kind of came to the decision that like it it really isn't a healthy environment. So I was mm. like, okay, what do I really really want to do? So I kind of talked to a few friends, and then they kind of like just do, just do your own thing. You're not you're not an employee. Like you you never was. I'm like. Okay, okay, no wow. point, no point. So I'm like, okay, screw it lah. I just do my own thing. So B Nation itself uh, was a community that was built like prior to all this already. Right. It was it was already existing. Um, so I was like, okay, you know what? Like, let me put my head down and really build it properly. So we, so yeah, like uh, we, we went and talked to the Ministry of Education, mm. uh, got them to recognize us as the official like, uh, um, B-boxing lessons provider. So we went into all the schools around the Malaysia. So um, yeah, at one point we were in like seven, eight schools between international, uh, national schools and et cetera, et cetera, uh, giving workshops, doing presentations. We had like a few teachers as well. So it was running good. And then COVID hit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so everything shut down. Uh, but yeah, um, obviously okay. in between that, that also we were actually planning a lot of things. We were actually this close to getting Beatbox as a TV show as well. So yeah, yeah. So oh. it was... On, on Astro, is it? Or? Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it was really close, but uh, COVID, the production house, they also got slammed very hard. Like they, they were supposed to help us push it up, but I understand lot, right? So I was like, ah, oh, it's okay, lah, never mind. So every plan got put on hold and I just stuck at home and nothing to do. And then eventually kind of, okay. But at the time kind of crypto was already there. Mm. So a lot of things are actually overlapping. So yeah. when I was doing beatbox, I was already checking out crypto. And then, um, uh, yeah, during COVID. And then I kind of, we also started um, a, a video editing a agency for YouTubers around the world. So we actually have like, like literally on my way here, just now I was just having a call with one of our clients. So we, we basically help YouTubers edit their videos. So we have like dozens of clients around the world. Lah. So we built that during COVID. And then at the same time, I personally also kind of dive deep into crypto, like how I dive deep into beat, like beatboxing itself. Yeah. See, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so before we go into crypto, I just want to ask about beatboxing specifically. Um, what, what do you, because you, you've been in so many different industries, right? But the unique thing about business is that you can learn from each other's industries. So yeah. how has uh, beatboxing <coughs> business, uh, yeah, like changed the way you think or change your life maybe? And uh, yeah, how have you brought it into other areas of your life? Like why was beatboxing so important, I guess? Uh, well, fundamentally, um, I used to be a very anti-social kid, like, uh. like a fat kid that cornered, just like anti-social. Like literally I was fat, like, right? So 
Um, one day, friend intro me to beatboxing when I was sixteen, and then like it literally changed my life. Like I, I, I could talk to people, I could go on stage, I could present, I could have this, and not like having yep. sweaty palms and all that. So, um, so to me, like emotionally speaking, like beatboxing holds a very important place in my life. So I personally treat it as my way of contributing back at it, and during this whole like doubling down on beatboxing and trying to build it i i also tend to i mean some of the things i kind of have the theory on it but it just kind of confirms it which is like people around the world they um they, there's a lot of untapped potential inside it like you can really branch sectors out of it but it's just a matter of like how well you can execute because like i can dream a big dream but down to execution it's yeah Mm, right. right. Yeah. So important. Yeah. Important lessons. Yeah. Okay, any questions before we move on to crypto? Oh, let's go into crypto. Okay. <laughs> let's go to Jen. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, share with us like uh, when you first got into crypto. Uh, what was the first coin you bought, and then some of your experiences? My experience was actually back in 2017, 2018. Mm. Um, randomly, uh, it was se two separate occasions. The first one was like just hanging with an old friend catching up and then he was talking about hey you guys know about bitcoin it was like he was like yeah dude you know you can go on the black market and use it to buy <laughs> like illegal stuff i was like what <laughs> i was like oh okay cool 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 like, i didn't put too much in my head lah. but then he was like yeah dude this thing went up bro i was like wow <laughs> really yeah and then i didn't really go into it it was just like you know conversations my right you don't take it too seriously mm. and then after that um at one point like i uh, met another friend who was mining it Mm. So meet up and understood that like he was running a mining operation, right? Back then, obviously it's a uh, highly regulated, so they often get shut down. So he, he can't even tell me where it was. He was like, yeah, like I, I have it. And then, uh, we have like a whole team running it. I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Then he was, then he was like, yeah, la, bro, like I, I can help you all if you want. So I just put my money in, into the miners. Uh, what was it? Uh? It was a uh, five five zero. I remember it was a uh, uh, pretty okay miner. Um, it just mined when ETH was like two three hundred bucks, and then it skyrocketed into thousand three hundred dollars. It's like whoa, make money! And then I think that time we if 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 I cash out at that moment, I probably ROI the machine, uh, but instead I didn't. So I hold that. And then I watched the chart go like that, and then like that. Yeah, <laughs> like it went to ninety dollar. Right. Yeah, so it went to ninety dollar, and then I had I think like eight ETH at that time. So obviously eight ETH now is like quite a bit, right? But then it was ninety dollars, so yeah. it's like a few thousand ringgit. It's like oh okay, I put five figures, I got four figures now. It's like nice. what do I do here? <laughs> it's like do I sell and move on? I was like. Ah, never mind lah. Just, just, just hold lah. Like, what is gonna do? Like, why, why, like, whatever lah. So, so let be. And then, um, I think twenty twenty, yeah, around twenty twenty, was when uh, well, someone introduced me into a uh, notorious uh, play in Malaysia in which I participated, and uh, it actually made me some wealth and just. Yeah, <laughs> do do we talk about that here? No, you, you can if you want. Yeah, this is uh, the juicy part. If you don't mind, the, yeah. If you don't uh, mind, um, okay. Uh, I don't know how much I can talk about it, lah. But it, it, essentially, it is an MLM, lah. Right? Mm. Essentially, right? I I mean, there's no like uh, sugar coat, right? So a lot of people join it. Uh, I also join it, and uh, obviously they promise uh, certain returns and it did give me that return and then I exited. Uh, I had some insight still and then it imploded and say that, oh, uh, our, what's that called? Our, our, our CTO or somebody okay. uh, go and leverage trade on the, on the coin and then like, oh, all the, all the money gone. Da, 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 mm. da, da, da. But, um, yeah, then everybody always has a conspiracy theory. Like, oh, no, la, actually, they, they jow low la, with all the money. Yeah. Ta, 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 ta. It never happened. Also. Um, yeah, everybody has a conspiracy theory. La, so I don't, I don't know. I, I don't 
I don't really partake <laughs> in any of the conspiracy theory thing. Can we, can we guess yeah, we, what yeah, the name you guess, you guess. of the scam? Oh, not a scam, sorry, that, that company is. Yeah, yeah. Starts with a T. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's in Singapore. Very notorious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, you guys can figure it out. The, the, the hint is in our previous podcast. Yeah, Adrian, Adrian, so yeah Adrian, uh, Adrian did tell us about it yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same. Yeah, in fact, Adrian was the one that introduced me into it. Uh, okay. <laughs> ah, <cool. laughs> we talk about your history with Adrian. Uh, but what, what got you to, to exit? Because we know people oh. like Adrian and, uh, you know. Uh, others, well, so. the friend that introduced him into it mm. <laughs> was actually because uh, he is more experienced in this space, right? And then his his recommendation is like, okay, I get that you guys are excited about return, which we are. Like, holy, holy moly, this thing is paying, man. So, but like, the better idea here would be not to double down, but to diversify, mm. right? Because if you don't diversify, any golden goose die, you die with it. Yeah, correct. So. Uh, luckily enough, we listened to him and then he found something else and then we kind of took our money and put there. And I personally put a lot, like, like I literally doubled down there instead. So I kind of just took everything out and it was the bare minimum that was in there and then just like went the other way. And yeah, I was, I was very lucky, right? Um, some people not so lucky. Um, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, I don't have much to say about yeah, that, right? Sure. Yeah, I think everybody has their own uh, strategy and opinion at that time. Mm. So, yeah. Good. I mean, well, so what was this other project that, uh, un unless you can share, uh, of course. Celsius. But... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. So okay. Celsius was, uh, yeah, yeah. We, sell, we, sell, right. Yeah, yeah, sell. So, I mean, now it's like, but before this, I think we started entering around like less than a dollar. Oh, so it went up it now, to like actually, seven yeah? to eight. And uh, now it's like, I don't know, like three. I don't know. Right, but right. it went up to like, seven or eight nice. like that. so we started exiting somewhere there mm. yeah so it's okay okay yeah of course of course yeah. of course so i have to ask now how do you get like in touch with adrian like how do you meet him wow how you guys become partners also after that uh right? did he tell you no 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 we, so we, we so posted you on the way here to, uh, to hear, yeah. uh, Your side of the story. okay this is gonna be tricky because uh, my ex works for him <laughs> My, yes, yes. My, my yes. ex, because he runs a translation company. Correct, correct. So my ex was one of the translators. And, and she said, it was like, you really like my boss. Huh? I think you all can get along very well. So one day she just pulled us and then we were eating porridge. The first time we met was at the Chiu Chao Chok at Uptown. Uh, I still remember. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that's also where, yeah. So uh, just had a dinner there with him and I was like sharing my, my, my ideas. Huh? Back then I was like quite, uh, how do I say exploring all kind of stuff at that time I was looking into like AI AI articles because uh, GPT-3 that time was like GPT-2 or 3 I can't remember but it was like the, the hot topic at the time I was like oh hey what if you just like use article like AI to write uh, SEO optimized blogs and then just like run that by the thousands because like it costs you literally a cent right so um, yeah so I was sharing the idea with him etc cetera, etc cetera. and then obviously nothing happened but here and there, we started to get into different things. So, so uh, one of it involves Spotify. Uh, so making music, it was quite funny. And then another was actually going to Steam it. Steam Use, it, okay. Yeah, it was like this uh, decentralized social media platform and all that. Ah, okay. So um, yeah, I was trying to put beatboxes there and try to help them make money and all that. Obviously all these failed. And then the third one was actually Lambda. So Lambda staking itself. Um, it's a Cardano stake pool, right? Yeah, yeah, the Cardano stake pool. Yeah. So that time, uh, it was a funny story because <clears throat> if you go to Cardano website today, even still today, it's the same thing. Which I, whoever that is running, that's thinking about <laughs> going to that thing, right? I need to warn you about the calculator. There's a calculator there, which shows you staker and operator. So you would say like staker, if you stake, uh, I don't know, 10,000 ADA, like 7%, you make like 700 or something like that, right? Whatever. On the operator, you would say if you put in, I don't know, 50,000 ADA to delegate and then you get, <clears throat> um, and then and then you're expected, like return is like 160% or something like that. That's not true. That's not true, okay? Whoever is thinking of it, that's not true. It's, mm. I think it's just marketing, right? I, I'm not saying it's a lie. It's probably a marketing ploy because we thought it was real. <laughs> we thought, hey, run this for a year, 160%. Hey, legit, mm -hmm. le, side business. Ah. So we put money in and then we run. Halfway through, like before we're about to start it, right? As, as we understand with the community of staking, we're like, 
actually, yeah, uh, it's very far from the truth. Uh, unless you have the people sticking with you, you don't get that kind of reward. Mm. So we we're like, oh man. So like, screw lah, we just run it. And then uh, we were very lucky. The first epoch, we mine a block. So when you get to do that, like dry out the gate, it's extreme luck already, number one. Number two, within the first month or the fifth week, I can't remember, fourth or fifth week, right? A random whale came in with 20 million ADA. Mm. At that time was, uh, I don't know, like... We can sense. It was like the 50 cents or something like that. It was a lot. It's $10 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then, um, yeah, because of that whale, we were like printing. Because epochs, my epochs are based on how many EDA is yeah. participating. So mm. because of that, we were getting a lot of blocks. And then everybody was, I mean, obviously, it's like average split out to everyone. But as an operator, you get to earn. Um, so at one point, at the height of it, we reached about like 24. Five or twenty-six million ADA stake with us, and at that time it was one dollar per ADA. Ooh. So we had a hundred million ringgit stake with us. We was like, "What is going on?" Like it wasn't two months in. We we're like, "What the heck?" So this was like Valentine Day, <laughs> two years ago, uh, tw- No, no, no. Uh, well, twenty twenty-one. Oh, twenty twenty-one New Year. I remember the price. I think it was a dollar. Yes, yes, yes. ADA. That time, that time. Mm. Yeah. So it was like, what? Yeah. So it's quite happy. Mm. Yeah, so that's that that was the third thing we did together and kind of kicked off and worked and then okay lah, you know, like so so me and him we would spend nights like because after the tea thing imploded, so we we felt like uh, a fiduciary duty between mm. us and the people we introduced we were like, okay, you know what, we, we need to help these guys because some of them some they're not gonna come back. Like this is this is bad, right? Some of them is life savings kind of yeah. stuff. So I was like Damn. So we we each have our own idea, but generally we started exploring yield farming. So we discovered pancake. Mm-hmm. And then pancake was what, two, three dollars? And then yellow just enter and then like some three hundred percent APY. It was nuts. So um yeah, they went deep down into the BSC hole. All and the shit coins and all that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway. many, so many shit coins. So <laughs> Some of them make money, some of them lose a lot of my money. So I'm like, oh man, but learn like it learn. happens. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you get you gotta at least get burned once. Yeah. Then you know to stay very far away from all these random you farming, especially one of the funny name. You know there was a Haka Finance. Haka Finance. Yeah. <laughs> like Haka, like H A K K A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haka nice. Finance. And then you had like well, the coin was like one ton me or something. Oh, it's like Hokkien Finance. Legit, bro. legit. Yeah. There was yeah, a like, there was a Malaysia made you farming also tiger something Damn. yeah yeah the, the coin is called ringgit la, i suppose <laughs> yeah. yeah so then i know lambda sort of transition i don't know fully or not but definitely made a transition to xz right yeah uh i would say expand la. so mm. what happened was uh i, I kind of checked out axie when you was still on the eve chain and it cost you 200 dollars to go from an egg to an adult, there was still something called larva at the middle. So you had to like pay gas to transition it. And then there was no automation for any of these. So you're doing manually and then you can fail. <laughs> it's just like so much work. Uh, but yeah, like I was like, hey, actually this thing can make some money. Like if you think about it, it's like, okay. Can I so I kind of like asked in our, our group chat. So we have a Lambda group chat by then. It was like, oh, do anybody here do XC? So there was like one of our third partner, he kind of showed up. Uh, um, I don't know what name do I call him by because he has two identity. But I'll just call him partner C lah. Yeah, if sure. he if he decides to reveal himself lah. Well, so, his name start with a T. Ah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That I guy. <laughs> so yeah, because I don't know which name to call okay. him by. Because oh, yeah, he, okay. he gets he gets like bro, don't dox me, bro. Yeah. It's like okay. partner C <sighs> then. Partner okay. C. Yeah, okay. so okay. partner C came in, was like, hey, I have land and some axi or so, you know. Like you know, like you wanna do something together. Cause I also have, I was like, okay, okay, okay. And I told Adrian, I like, okay, okay, yeah. So, so we kind of put money together and then we started doing the scholars. Uh. So this was like, no one knew about Axie at that point. We were just like making some money. Dun, 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 dun. And then at that time, AXS was like a dollar. This was pre-June or May during the crash uh, last year. Way before, like start of the year. Oh. So in March. So like at that time, you don't even use AXS to breed. At that time, yeah. you were using ETH and SLP. So, uh, and then they went on to Ronin and then you had to use a- AXS. And then at the time, I think AXS was like three, $5 uh, at the beginning. So 
we we raise a crowdfund. Um, so instead of buying AXS and just hodling it, we went and spent all of it on oh, breeding. Nice. So we were like, yeah, 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 it can work, it can work. So then AXS proceed to go like a hundred x, literally a hundred x, and then we we're like, wow. And then and then XC price continues to go down. They were like, wow. Oh. That was the worst decision we've ever made. I mean, not the worst. I I had worse, <laughs> but generally speaking, like it wasn't a, yeah. So that kind of also gave me into the idea, like, I mean, just divert topic, right? Sure, this is sure. something that even like recently, I so uh, talked to a lot of cute friends and like kind of like mm. have a very interesting sentiment. Game five coins work when. Uh, a, actually gives more return compared to you burning the game five coin to breed whatever it is. Uh, so hodling or staking it would make more financial hodling sense. Hodling generally would be better because mm. sometimes even staking it have a lock or some cost. Yeah. Like sometimes it's better to just hodl it, make a 20x and just get out. Okay. Right? It's it's crazy to think like that because um because most of us, we treat it as a financial return, right? Mm. I mean, if you want to talk here for entertainment value, right? Honestly, there isn't any, like, to be frank, like, I, I mean, I explore this place quite a while and I cannot find anything that makes me feel like, oh, you know, I'd play this every day. Yeah. I mean, I do, I play DeFi Kingdom, but it's not playing, it's not just really. clicking. Yeah. I'm clicking it to, like, generate income. Uh, so, <clears throat> it's, 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 there is nothing yeah. that's, yeah. I, I have to ask you this question because this is something we came to a conclusion to. I think even if you did have a game that is decent, right? I think the fact that it's P to E mm. takes the fun out of it. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah. The fact that you have to like, it becomes a job. Yeah, yeah. So I think you can look at eSport, for example, right? You you have your competitive, you have your contestants who do it pro, right? So if you ask what their routines are, right? They can tell you they spend 10 hours. Exactly. <clears throat> involuntarily to get good at the game yeah it's involuntarily yeah so if they have a manager they have all this right they have a schedule to keep like you have to spend at least eight hours a day to play the game you have two three hours in between to rest that sounds like a job that is a job that is (laughs) yeah and you're sitting in front of your computer and then they can say oh we're doing the things we like yeah sure but then the guy that doesn't like the thing he's doing he's making like five figs or four figs like high four figs and he can you know pay for a family can you right you can pay if your manager have fun to pay you or you're winning big mm. which by the way you have to win big to get sponsor to give your manager some money to give you yeah. so it's like a weird relationship that is i mean i'm not i'm not i'm not taking a piss on the esports space of course, right? of course. Because, it is what it is yeah yeah but but it is like a very tricky situation that everybody has to like tai chi around right so mm. if that is like Consider if that's the pinnacle of gaming, right? What does that say about like play to earn, which is the idea of gaming, right? Like it 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 goes somewhere. It must go somewhere, right? Yeah. Where it, it can be entertaining. It used to be just about entertainment, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. COD used to just be me and you go to CC, play two hours, and then you go home. That's it. Yeah. But now it's like yo, uh, you can like, like uh, swap your, button, your your keys like that so you can quick swap the guns and then like that half a second will allow you to like uh, do do a shotgun trick like pa 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 and then you kill people faster and it's like, wait, am I, am I, what, I mean, am I playing the game or am I like trying to hack the game? I can't tell anymore. <laughs> yeah. So um, that that's kind of the things that I, I get, I get um, into, which is like, I'm, I'm, I'm a gamer. Like I, yeah. I love mm. FPS, like FPS is my thing. Right. And yeah, so I play because I like it. I like to shoot, right? But if you're telling me I'm shooting it so I can earn money, I'm like, huh? Like, like, it, like. So even like someone who is in it, right? I have that sentiment, right? Like, right, right. it must mean something. Okay. And yeah, the general audience, like P 2 E, is is a concept that obviously was big, was big, but it needs to adapt, right? Mm. I mean, DeFi adapted, right? DeFi is so different now compared to like whatever. Um, so. P to E should adapt, right? It, it should be like, I don't know, P and E, right? So so the term now is like play and earn, right? Earning mm. is a a side thing. It must be fun before it's making yeah. money. Yep. That, that's, that's like the, the uh, fundamental shift that you should have. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, but how do you think how do you think you would revamp say an XC game for example uh -huh. at this point? If you had the keys, you know, if you have one of the multi six Assuming it can be revamped, of yeah. course. Um what I learned is that the moment you decrease emission is more bearish, then you can't think of a good uh coin sink. A sink, right? So when if if let's say people are used to 10 coins a day, but then you want to cut it to five coins a day, that is way more bearish than yeah, you can't find you can't find a good uh uh um what's it called? A burn. A burn, yeah. Mm. You can't find a good burn. So personally I feel like having strong burns yeah. is always good. Um but it's um it how do I say it's a, it's an economy question, right? So a lot of games they kind of thrive because like at some point right the economy is actually broken at some point like some mm. at, until you reach a certain level of certain game like let's say it was world of warcraft or runes because i don't play those so i can't comment for sure but what i understood is that like once you reach a certain level of like whether it's wealth mm. or levels you are ac you your access is far beyond the yeah. newbies that starts today so you have access into the economy that they do not they can't tap into and you get to have the advantage to become an agent, right? To give them that those kind of access, whether it's uh, 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 sanctioned by the game or not, people just do it, right? So scholarships right? for sale. Yeah, right. So there, there must be an, the the economy fundamentally. It's I mean, even the real world economy is broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so how can people expect that um, a virtual economy can be perfect? So for me is, if you ask me like what can make it work the best, right? Honestly, like nothing, nothing, wow. nothing, nothing today will stand. Like that's my personal opinion. Like Axie, they did it, but they also popular popularized the theory of uh, emission, like mint and burn rate, like mm. theory, right? Oh, if the burn is higher, then that's bullish because it's deflationary but your supply is infinite. <laughs> what are you talking about? It doesn't matter, but <laughs> if you burn infinity, yeah. it's still infinity. Yeah, like money printer, like you print, 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 yeah, sure, I, I'm gonna spend it on Walmart, but if you keep printing, mm -hmm. and, I, and I have nothing to spend in Walmart anymore, you're just gonna keep printing, yeah. and what's yeah, happening, yeah. right? I got nothing to spend on. So so that's why like you, you kind of have to create more things to yeah. utilize concept. Yeah, here. but you cannot escape the fact that you are printing more money. Yeah. You are deflating it. So how so so now you have to increase your demands like the cost of it to to like counteract this so you have to print more like say it's an it's a never ending game right mm. so how how can we possibly expect that a P two E to figure out day one it mm. is impossible it, it it is a constant battle of like supply and demand right you mint right. more you burn more you mint more you burn more it is gonna be like this mm. so it's an endless cycle. Um, so yeah, the, like I can't I can't give a good suggestion, but I would say that um, if any game wants to do it, yeah, it, at some point they'd be like, oh, we're gonna give more mint now, and then oh, our hit sync is now crazier. So it's it's gonna be a battle. I right. mean, so even to the game is like, if you build a game, like, are you ready for that? Because yeah. your tokenomic, like, it's not gonna be like. How do I say? If if people back then cannot foresee the printing that it is today, yeah. how can we expect a game developer to have a tokenomic that can withstand what is to come? So it is, yeah. So since you're in the FPS, uh, let me ask you this way, right? Today, let's say you could build an FPS game, yeah. um, but on crypto, right? right? So you're gonna utilize NFTs and whatnot, right? Yeah. How will you do it? Do it blank check, you know, just. Uh, Assume budget's not a problem. NFT, okay, so for me is number one, am, what is my goal for the player? Is it to have fun or to mm. have money? Mm. To me, I'd rather to have fun. Mm. So I will probably not even have a token. Mm. <laughs> I just put NFT and be like, hey, you want to look cooler? Immutably? buy my NFT, right? Mm. Because token economics is economics. It, it is an economics. You, you have to get it right. So rather than 
trying to get everything out by day one. Sure. Like just like try step by step. NFT is something very straightforward actually, it, but actually it's a token also. But it's 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 a it's a token with JPEG. So people keep thinking NFT NFT, but it, to me it's a token. It's a token, yeah. So once you establish that fundamental, actually your NFT can have so much more utility that a token could. Right. Mm. You, you just have to think a little bit bigger. So it could be, um, uh, what's it called? Uh? There's a, there, like they, they, they like to do it, which is like, oh, you level up your NFT by like burning the, the project token yeah. and all those stuff. Like, so you can start with that, right? But you build the NFT first and then you see the demand, right? You, you, you figure out your circulating volume and then your personal project, projected volume. And then you can kind of like ga gauge a percentage increase, right? So from there, you can figure out the emission rate of your token. I mean, <laughs> basically the project at this point, we should do this right now, FPS with our. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you figure out your emission rate that can uh, match your, 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 your trading volume, yeah. right? S to make sure that your NFT do not emit something crazy. For example, if your volume like if people can buy, like let's say if you can figure out like, okay, maybe a like hundred people can buy mm. and then they can buy, buy an average of like half an ETH. So that's like what, 50 ETH? 50 ETH trading volume on a daily basis. So that means 1,500 ETH on a monthly basis. So you can figure out like, okay, how do I ensure that this 1,005 ETH volume can be used to, I don't know, either to serve as a heat sink from a project token or a percentage of it can be used to buy back token to counteract my personal emission rate. And then whatever I do with the bought back token, I can either burn it or, or do something, I do LP with it, whatever it is. Yep. So you can kind of create a, a testing ground, right? Because if you day one, you come up with tokenomic, right? And your LP is there, that's all you have, you know? Like your LP, if you put $5 million, that, that's all there is. I mean, you can put more money, but then that's taking out your pocket, your treasury, and and potentially your own personal emission, right? You don't want to do that, right? So you need to have a testing ground. So theoretically speaking, theoretically speaking, this is not an actual project. Yep. Theoretically speaking, having a testing ground to figure out numbers in your economy is great because then when you introduce something, you have numbers to work with because yeah, some obviously if you have like good advisors that they can obviously help you. Like for example, Delphi Digital, they love like <laughs> every Terra project is, is their name there, right? Correct, all the token, all the tokenomics, all the money, right, all the lock drop, all it's all the money. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of smart, right? So now like all the bullish projects on Terra, oh, is it Delphi there? Ah, Delphi there, ah, you know the lock drops coming, it's just yeah. going to be there. But then if you think about it, lock drop has done really well, right? Yep. Like look at Astro, right? Like that thing went like nothing to whoa, right? Like I, I had my airdrop, like I, I you know, so, cleared it, cleared it, right? However I did it, doesn't matter. Okay, LHDN, doesn't matter. I cleared it. Yeah, the terms clear it. And then it went down and then it went up. So like I bought it at the bottom. So with how much, I don't know. I was I was uh, I was blind that day, so I don't know how much I bought. Okay, I also don't know how much I sold. It's a it's a troubling problem. I cannot remember my cool. PNL. <laughs> That's good, man. Well, yeah, neither, yeah. Do, neither do we. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. so generally speaking, yeah, like, that's that's okay. kind of like what what you can expect, lah. So I would say have a testing ground, have a testing ground first before you talk about tokenomics. I think people jump into it too fast, today. Yeah, no no testing. As you said, like, create a fun game first and maybe inc implement your blockchain real exactly. to it much later. Exactly. Right. Like Adrian was talking about it over lunch. He said he would go back to play Maple Story now if he had time. Yeah, uh, he plays it every day. I think he still plays it. <laughs> la, no. Yeah, his, his wife plays it. Yeah, he, he and his wife plays it. <laughs> Let me imagine introducing a blockchain element, currency to it, and the NFTs to it. I feel yeah. like I would go back and do spending a lot of, shit, a lot of time on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. now you can actually like actually stuff, yeah. yeah play have fun at it then if you do things well if you accumulate the right nfts then mm. they become valuable then there's an economy you know things like that mm. right uh the, but is there any games right now that game five projects out right now that you, that you think is close to where you think uh game five should be okay personally i'm i have star atlas and DeFi kingdom but mm. both of them have their own problems um 
the games today, uh, I think the games today, they are smarter now. They saw the rise and fall and they saw the copycats. So these are the late mover advantage, right? So now you know what's happening. Um, there are some games that is not out yet, but they really focus on the fun aspect of it. The NFT side is just a skin only. So mm. it's not even going to be like a super expensive thing to go into. So that's the part where I'm more bullish on in the sense of like a project that um, doesn't uh, have its reputation via inflated value, right? Like not because like, oh, AX is now $100, it's going to go $200 actually buy now. Like that's that's a play on the financial value of it. It's not a play on the game itself. Mm. So if the game itself is fun, um, personally, I still haven't seen any that mm -hmm. I can like properly interact and That's I can true. go WSAD and I can go left. I haven't seen one. Oh, I see one actually, sorry. Um, Ascenders, they had an alpha test and then the other one is Embersort. And then Big Time also had their uh, alpha test now. So if you have any of the NFTs, you can go in. Ascenders is just a free game. You can just go in and play. Okay. Uh, so three of them. So these are like... Uh, uh, so I, if I'm correct, Big Time is something like World of Warcraft. Right. Right, like those MMORPG. Uh, Ember Sword should be similar as well. Uh, Ascenders is more like action action game. La. So I played it like It's like like slashing slashing kind of game it's kind of fun but it's just like a demo um so there are some that they are building um star Atlas, i really wish it become a like star citizen you know that one yeah so I'm i, I like it to eve online actually i don't know if you remember there's this yes game eve online yes so i'm really wishing i'm that's that's my whole pm right now i just want star Atlas to become like that because i have some very nice ships and i would like to sell them on a profit because <laughs> i'm on a loss right now i'm like yeah again i don't know how much loss i have or, or how much profit i have i also don't remember which ship i own it's it's a troubling thing like yeah. you know when i click on metamask i i, I can't remember Some, sometimes you lose it also. yeah yeah Some I, sometimes just... i lose my seed phrase yeah. you know yeah. wow all my money gone now yeah yeah, Ay, yeah. i have to pay tax la. Yeah, I don't know how to pay that. Actually, speaking of <laughs> NFTs, right? Maybe uh, like what has been your your experience like? Cause, yeah, I mean NFT is a very like I'm very surprised that people in DeFi are skeptical of NFTs, even though they are like the same same family in that you know it's crypto. So like, uh, what's your experience been like? You know, in NFT, <clears throat> uh, you treat it like how BTC and ETH Maxi used to be the topic, mm. but that topic is now gone because every BTC holder is like down bad in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless they hold a hundred dollar, okay, different story. Lah. But generally all the 40K people are crying now like, internally. Uh, the Eve Maxis, which bought at 4K, thinking it's going to 10K, is also crying internally. Yeah. So all of them are down bad. So that is the narrative when DeFi was the thing. Right, mm. any coin just like 300% APY, 300% APY, 1000% APY, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million, 1 trillion APY. Olympus time. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? <laughs> 10, 000, fixed APY forever. So, okay. So imagine this. When there was a BTC and ETH Maxi argument, there's DeFi, right? So now this is gone. So now there's NFT, right? Which NFT is a blue chip? Da, 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 da. Mm. And then there's the DeFi Maxi now. They're sitting there in their 100% APY, thinking back the good old days of 1,000 APY. They are there, they, they got nothing to do. There are people that are still making money here. But that's the thing. Like I have turned, I've come to realize, I, I am here as well, I'm a DeFi guy. I started with DeFi. And I have problems with NFT because I can't keep up. Yeah. But I also recognize that the people in NFT, they are making it hard. Like there are people who have challenges of like one ETH to 100 ETH in like, uh, I don't know how many days and they actually make it happen. So if you think about it, right? 100 X on ETH quantity and not, not the dollar, right? It's actually quite a, quite a feat because you're not doing it over a course of like, you know, half a year. You're doing it across like days. two months. Something yeah, days, like days, right? So sometimes you buy a 0 0.07, you end up with like zero point, I don't know, one ETH. That's, that's a lot of money, like just a pop up like that, only, right? So, um, personally, I think that it's it's a it's a boomer and zoomer conversation, la, mm. right? Somebody one. is holding it too long. Somebody understand that they are the future. Um, somebody in the middle, they are like, I don't know what to do now. So that's me. Like I'm in the middle, right? Like 
I don't hold BTC. I don't hold ETH. I don't hold any coin, by the way. Same, so, same. Yeah, I don't hold any coin. Yeah, it's just magic internet. Yeah, money. yeah. Hypothetically, it, right? hypothetically, if I were it's to hold, I I hold zero BTC. I I hold I hold no ETH. I mean, uh, hypothetically, only if I have ETH, I only hold it just because I want to buy some energy. Hypothetically, you know what? You're not gonna draw uh, with our viewers. You're not going to draw uh, oh. attention from the. Okay, Regu- because the, the 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 authorities, you oh, actually draw it? more attention from the uh, from the maxis. Actually, we have a few maxis yeah. uh, that oh, watch our stuff. You know, every time we talk, any even look, some of them like even ETH is like a bad idea for some reason. You know, then so, then I think they are very lucky because they got BTC a hundred dollars. Yeah, probably. if they didn't, then I have uh, to ask them, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Because I mean, okay, I like I like this quote. Uh, you want to be right or you want to make money? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Very true. Like that's that's this that's the, the whole space is about, right? I mean, it sucks because I know people who are passionate about the idea of decentralization. They really want to build, build, build. Then there are people who want to make money. Unfortunately, it's the majority that wants to make money. Yep. So I like both ends. I do like the idea of decentralization. Um, but I also have to face reality. Uh, that doesn't put food in my mouth. Yeah. Uh, for some people, yes, but they have to be real freaking maxis. They have to be really good coders, at least, uh, or they have really good connections because mm-hmm. they were here in the early days. Good for them. The rest of us, we are not. I'm just a guy here. Like, I'm just trying to get by. Like, what do you want me to do? Be maxi like you go learn coding? I'm 31 years old, bro. Come on. <laughs> Let's be real, right? So I ha- I'm on this camp. I love this camp, but I'm on this camp, mm-hmm. right? So, so we're flexible. Yeah, you have to be flexible in this space, right? So the same thing I will ask every Maxi, even the Luna Axi. <laughs> Granted, I am a Luna Maxi, right? When do you want to sell your Luna? A thousand dollar? Do you think about the market cap, sir? Yeah. So but it's deflationary, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, everything is deflationary. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I got in because of the deflationary. I got in when the anchor APR was uh, 160, 200%. During May crash. Uh, yeah, no there. one was there. I was there sitting like, oh, click, click. Okay, go sleep. Click, click. Okay, I can. Theoretically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Theoretically, I can click every day. La. I just look at it. I have no money there. So, um, yeah. So that was, a, that was a good run for me, la, right? But to, to the point is like every... Everything has a start and a beginning. Uh, sorry, a beginning and an end. Yeah. Right. It's it's a roller coaster. Why why are you riding the low of the roller coaster when you know the one next door is about to go up? Mm. It's just that just, just that only. So for me, it's also like I am I am a Luna Maxi. Don't get me wrong, but it's not exactly the most outperforming. I mean, yeah, it is. It's holding its price. It's holding its price. But why are you why are you why are you swimming with the volatility when you can just chill and wait? Why? Like, so, um, yeah, yeah. So, so that's kind of like my, my questions to all Maxi, right? Right. That's, uh, that's, that's really good, man. I think uh, we found a rare gem because we also talk a lot about Maxism and we realize how ridiculous some of these things like, I mean, you're supposed to fall in love with people, uh, not, not your tokens. <laughs> uh, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I, heard right. this, I heard this phrase from a friend. His friend said, what do you think token is for? Token is for selling. <laughs> yeah. What do you think for more token for? It's more selling. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah. Good point. Yeah, right. I Good mean, point. it's that, that bell curve meme, right? The, yeah. the beginning and the end. These yes, are the guys yes, that get yes. it right. Uh, yes. Same conclusion, different way they get the conclusion, right? Yes, basically. Yeah. Okay, now I'll talk a bit about your, your personal interests. Um, your card games. I think you watch a lot of the more videos than I have. So... Do you have any questions for his, uh, for his <laughs> hobby? No, I, I think one thing, one theory that I have is that NFT flipping and Pokemon card trading flipping mm. has a lot of similarities. La. You got to find, I suppose, you got you to gotta discern or determine value before it's actually valuable. Yeah. Very much, right? And you, you mentioned starting with crypto first and then going into Pokemon. What, why, what made you, I wouldn't say do that pivot, but what made you jump into Pokemon card trading? Logan Paul. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. In 20, I think it was the end of 2011. Or, eh, no, somewhere. Lah. 
Mm. Uh, one one of the year ends, can't remember. I, he started doing this. Uh, I bought three hundred thousand booster box base set. I'm gonna open it live, and then we're gonna try and pull charts or ta ta ta. So, watching that made me realize that holy moly, I was in the wrong card game when I was a kid. Because mm-hmm. I was in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like damn. So like, then I went back and checked. I was like, wow, really? These these things flew up so much in price. And then it's like, it, it's not like one out of 10. Like if there was four sets from 1999 today, all four sets are up tremendously. Like, so you're like, if you take the logic and then you DCA your way into every set, you just buy one box, one box, one box, one box, one box. You will come out with an average performance mm. of like, pretty decent right some some you can like personally right now um i have a online store on shopee um my 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 yeah we're handling it so um generally i can sell like not gonna lie like people know this like 30 40 percent profit margin and i don't sell like every what everybody sells i sell the rarer stuff like Mm. pokemon center exclusive stuff and i don't have to sell every day but 30 40 percent margin on that and I literally just buy it over, sell, buy it over, sell, buy it over, sell. That's crazy. When I make enough profit, I buy one or two for myself, which I will hold, which I know for a fact next year this thing will two x. So the hedge on that is, I, I treat it as a hedge against crypto's volatility. Like NFT, yes, it's similar, but NFT is way more fast paced. Pokemon mm. is like, it's like what's it? What's it? What's it called? It's called re- it's like reads. Ah. It's like it's like reads for the flipping scene right you 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 if you have the liquidity you can hold it for long term but for me is i hold it for long term like all the things i buy the things i book right i would say that half of it is for the store but half of it is for myself mm. or, or less than half of it is my myself huh? because yeah i just want to hold these things because i see that they they will have a lot of value in the future yeah mm. so that's yeah. my hedge Cool so if if you edge. if you you will recommend someone to hold let's say the top like three cards in Pokemon right now what what would what would the Pokemon be? It doesn't I, have to be the one that makes the most money, but yeah, it can yeah. be something. You I like. wouldn't I wouldn't hold cards because I'm a sealed product guy. Mm. So so there's also a lot of things like right, sealed right. products, cards, graded cards, mm. ex, uh, uh, special editions, all that. Personally, I'm a seal seal product guy. So by seal product, you mean like the uh, booster box itself? The boost, oh, uh, the box. Okay, like okay. so, they have thirty six packs. Each pack of like ten to thirteen cards, depend on the set. So yeah, that box, uh, one box right now. I think if you go to any store, like depending on which set, it should range around uh, five hundred to six hundred, depending on which set, mm, right? Mm. So theoretically speaking, theoretically, not mm. financial advice. If you buy that today, at 550 which is uh the the msrp is about like four something so that's already like uh, a bit of a jump if you're willing to hold that for like one two years you will realize that you can sell it at, i don't know 800 ringgit something like that. so if you were to get it at 400 so in two years time you know that you can 2x that thing so if you follow that logic mm. so long you can find all the 400 ringgit and below kind of product and you have the liquidity to hold it yeah and if yeah. you want to hold it even longer just hold it until the set is out of print so meaning that they don't print the set anymore that usually takes about like a year or two eh, not a year two um it's about a, about two years uh, until until they confirm they're not going to print anymore a so cap supply line that's yeah, like yeah 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 so once it stopped minting mm. that's where it starts because mm. Thing about Pokemon is the moment you open the box, the box loses value. So mm. it's like it's like lottery tickets, right? Gotcha. Once you scratch, it's gone. So same thing here. If you open, you better wish there's a Charizard in there. You better have a very good reason. So, um, so sometimes some 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 of these are like opening the pack will have higher value than keeping it as a sealed pack. But overall, holding it sealed. Mm. They're more guaranteed, lah. Yeah, They're it's a guaranteed. safer way to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say forty yeah. percent profit versus a very low chance of like a hundred x, lah. Give and take. It's not even a hundred x to be honest. It's more like twenty percent above your your purchase price. Oh, uh, then the no brainer, lah. Yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, do yeah. It more. But uh, but obviously, if you're a player or you like the thrill of opening packs, then you go open, lah. 
Right. But, but for me, I I I quite I, I can I can I can tahan lah. Yeah. A lot of people, right? Yeah. They they very smart one. They put the booster box in front of them, in front of the computer as they work. So they're looking at it every day. Oh, I want to open, bro. I want to open, bro. I was like, well, why you why you doing? You're torturing yeah. yourself. Yeah. Just put it to the side. Yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're killing yourself. Like just put it yeah. in front of you at all time. Like that's that's not smart. Like just put it to the side. You'll yeah. never open or, it again. Or ask you. someone to like like keep it for you or something. Yeah, like, safe or right. lock, lah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like Okay, man. Look, uh, it's it's coming to an hour, and you know, I think we have a lot more I- lunch. You good? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, I just have one. We we we're starting this new thing where we have a we have like a question right at the end, uh, like a more general one. And uh, I mean, before that, you got any more questions? No, I think before yet. Before that, um, yeah. we have this nice list here, so don't miss out anything. Uh, <laughs> what are your personal dreams and visions of Lambda? Yes, is actually. that is that what? Uh, I know you have a lot of things going on for you. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how, how big Beatbox is still for you, but personal visions, personal goals for yourself, for your company. Uh, I think because I, I have a few few projects on hand, now, right? Mm. So obviously different projects, different goals. Uh, some of it is obviously profit maxi, lah, right? I just want to make money. Some is just for my passion. So for example, like Beat Nation, it's pure passion. Like it's it's my personal financial sinkhole. So whatever I earn, I just whew, try that. So I that one, I just want the community to thrive on its own. Lah. Like I, I don't want it to rely on me anymore because it, it does. I mean, not say it relies on me, but if I know for a fact, if I don't do anything, nothing happens. So uh, mm. or rather a bigger scale. Lah. So it's pretty sad. So I want to make sure that the community can survive on its own mm-hmm. and it doesn't need additional funding in the future. Right? So that's my goal for that. Um, some other things that I do, for example, like Lion Triple, which is the YouTuber thing I do, um, that's a profit profit maxi thing. Like I just want it to generate a decent profit, run on its own, and that, that's all. Um, for Lambda itself, is that we, I, I always treated it as a community thing. That's all. Like I never thought of like making it a money making machine. It's just so happened that we come across opportunities and we say like, hey, anybody want to do it together? So we mm. crowdfund. That's all. So, Lambda is that there is no like big big dream lah. I would say uh, it's just a community. We just want to build a nice community. Everyone can come and hang and DJ a bit, talk about shit, shit like you know, just just talk crap all the time mm. as we can, right? Just just trying to help people who are unfamiliar in the space to have a community to like talk to lah. Like there are people who still ask like, "Hey, my my MetaMask seed phrase if like." I make new account. Is it to the same C phrase or not? Like we still get questions. Yeah. I get I get questions like that also. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 dude. It's just like that. Only. Like you just need to help them, right? Like, because yeah. imagine when you didn't know, and exactly. then you go to MetaMask and then you ask, and some Telegram, fuck, uh, some some guy gonna DM you, <laughs> and then you give C phrase. Yeah, that's gonna be sadder. So, just wanna help them lah, right? And hope that reciprocate it to others as well. So just just that. Um, I have a farm. Like, yeah. 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 Farm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the farm is profit maxio. So that one is just, just, okay. just so like, if crypto goes to zero, I have mm. a farm. Nice. Poke- yeah, Pokemon, same thing. If crypto goes to zero, I have Pokemon. That's, that's all. It's just hedges I have. Yeah. That's a that's a very different way of thinking about. It, uh, I mean, his whole life story. Thing. Your whole life story is uh, taking the unconventional path. Right? Yeah. From beatboxing to to crypto to events, you know. Yeah. It's not your typical nine to five. So. I mean, I suppose as you mentioned earlier, you gotta be thankful to your parents for that. I, just, I suppose your parents were very supportive in this journey of yours. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I think it's more about proving first, lah. If anything, I think mm. a lot of parents, all parents love all their kids. It's just that they always have a sense of uh, fear. It's it's the fear that I think only parents will have. Like me, I, I I don't I'm not I don't have a kid yet, so I don't know. But I think when I have the kid, I will know the fear that your your son or your daughter will go down the wrong path or they, they cannot feed themselves so you mm. have to constantly be there for them. So I think these kind of things, um, until I'm that status, I wouldn't know. But I can understand how my parents used to think about me. And now that I can do things for myself, they, they get it. Lah. So I think they're more... They're more supportive now than before because before they were, they were always treating like, your beatboxing is hobby only. You don't put so much time, you know, it's a hobby only. No, how much you make, ah? Like, ah, okay lah, okay lah, I think okay lah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like yeah. the, don't know how to be supportive, but try to be supportive kind of a attitude. So it's like that lah. They're, yeah. they're actually hedging their risk because <laughs> they know, right? 
They know, right? If they fail, they can say, I told you so. If you succeed, I was there. Yeah, yeah. neutral. <laughs> stay neutral all times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> smart. That's the, that's, the, that's the smart one. Yeah. Okay, any, any more? No. Okay, okay, this is the last, uh, last question, right? Like, you know, being a degen like, uh, in crypto, uh, is 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 very different. Like it's, it's, you can't really relate to a lot of people outside mm. the the field. How do you think it has changed like your life in general? Like being deep, you know. I, I think Adrian studying Bo Yo guys like three weeks, never leave the computer, looking to BSC yeah, coins, yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that. Um, I think the one thing I learned a lot is liquidity. Mm. It's a very funny thing actually. Um, liquidity determines a lot of things on a personal level, on a project level, and on the macro level. Um, people can talk all the decentralization they want, but the moment the whales leave, the moment the, the, the wallets start dumping, no one can stop. And everybody has been providing liquidity for the whales to dump. So it's very contradictory to everything we just said, right? But the, the truth of the truth of the matter is that like whales control the market right they they are the they are the lp like you know like i i know it because me and my friends we lp for projects before so we can see the damage we can do and yeah so i wouldn't <clears throat> if so so if i can say something to people who have uh, who are still trying to make it in this space mm. right um Learn to not love whatever that you have and learn to love profit more. A little more, just a little more. Like learn to love profit a little more because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what will going to be having a bad mood and just go and market dump on you. And you became liquidity though. You're, you're, you became the exit liquidity the yeah. whole time. If you want a DGEN, right? Uh, DYOR, all this and FA are up. Like one month in, right? You already forgot all this word already. So all I will say is, remember mm -hmm. about liquidity, yeah, right? Is that deep liquidity or no? If there's 30K dollar worth liquidity, trust me, you can get dumb like that. If there's half a million, okay, maybe. Two million, okay, that's a little bit better, but please be careful. Lah. So th these are the kind of things I would I would say now to people. Mm -hmm. Like I would say that, yeah. Cool. Nice man. Hey, thank you for coming on to the pod. It's been an awesome session. Um, I got one one mini request. I totally oh, yeah, understand yeah, yeah. if if it's uh not something you oh, don't no. want to do. We're thinking. Oh no. Let's sign us out. Oh, to sign no. us out in your signature. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's up to you. You know. Why not you sign us out from today's podcast? It's your call. W w how do you sign yeah. out usually? Usually, you say thanks, Charles. See you in the next video, right? Oh, you can always uh, beatbox words. That works as well. Just be straightforward. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, fine. We'll do it one time. Yes, just one time. Even just, just five seconds. Is cool, okay. Man. Thanks for watching the viral. See you in the next one. Hey. That's awesome, bro. Right. Nice. See you guys, Thanks, man. man. Thanks for being here. Yeah.